if you wouldn't mind, uh, your name, please? Yes, it's uh, Julio Alejandro. And Julio, what are you uh, currently doing in London? Because I know you're not here very often. No, I'm the CEO and founder of Humanitarian Blockchain, and I'm also the UK foreign correspondent for a Mexican newspaper at Excelsior. What experience have you had so far looking at or dealing with blockchain technology? Amazing. We have three failed blockchain um, pilots um, that are happening. One of them, Blockchain in Calais, we tried to deliver four liberating technologies, that's how we mentioned. Bitcoin Visa debit cards, um, a digital identities, a DAO model for human rights organizations, and Estonia e-residences for high-skilled immigrants in the, in the port of Calais in June 2016. We also tried to provide eSalam card uh, for missing person and collection data against human trafficking, especially for women and prostitution. Another one, recent Match and Teach Me for Social and Cultural Integration uh, that we presented in Jordan about two weeks ago, three weeks ago actually, uh, the MIT Enterprise Forum, co-hosted by United Nations, and uh, we tried to bring blockchain technologies uh, for the refugees and for economic immigrants uh, from the Middle East that are coming to Europe. Wow, this man's a very busy man, right? So, and I understand you've been traveling around the world recently. Um, I take it this is trying to get some of these startups up and running, or is this just been going on a recon mission and looking around the world at how blockchain can help certain elements of our world that is in a bit of a state at the moment? Both. Uh, some, um, so I've been traveling, should be around 25th of October at the moment. I've been traveling to seven countries within the last 15 days. Just arrived a couple of days ago. Uh, before, I was traveling to 13 German cities within 15 days in September. And I do two things. One of them is consultancy to teach human rights organizations what are the applications and successful use cases, not just ideas that are happening in your, ma in, in your mind, but actual uh, organizations that are solving uh, slavery in the fishing industry, like, um, like Jesse Baker, that are solving famine in Kenya and in Myanmar, uh, like Genevieve, Genevieve uh, that are solving uh, human rights violation, like Diverse or Alice Dio, or many of the crypto national uh, or, um, tokens or currencies. So I give, I make that part of uh, teaching them within eco, within consultancy to human rights organization, and I also analyze the local ecosystems of Frankfurt, of Estonia, of Slovenia, of Lithuania. Uh, this idea that is called blockchain, how strong it is uh, within these European nations, what are the comparisons, and what are the particular needs and opportunities uh, for one particular idea, uh, idea or industry of blockchain for it to develop in, co in opposition or in contraposition of another one. Thank you. And, and that actually leads me on to ask, being a Londoner, uh, how does London fit in uh, on the global scale in terms of where it's at in its blockchain technology and the people involved in it, meetups and the scene in general? Do you think it's growing here or, or, or how does it compare to the rest oh, of the world? It's, uh, it's growing across the world. I would assume that it, it's not that I would assume. Uh, after traveling to up to 30 cities within the last two or three months, uh, I would definitely and without any hesitation um, could express that London is definitely the capital of, uh, of Europe in terms of blockchain. Uh, more than Paris, I was uh, La Maison de Bitcoin, the house of Bitcoin, in the third or fourth arrondissement in Paris uh, a couple of weeks ago, meeting with Andreas Antonopoulos and other blockchain developers. And it's a very, it's not a, it's not a big ecosystem. Here in London, we have about six or seven blockchain meetups, more or less every month. Uh, we have Coinstream, we have No Man, and whatever characterizes specifically London is that I see that they have more solutions not only within blockchain, but within Ethereum, within DAOs and smart contracts, and that has a strong political component. Given by Binay Gupta, by uh, Janina Lawis, uh, Susan Trakovsky comes very often in here, and there's a lot of political and social humanitarian perspectives uh, by Rafael Masset, uh, but the guys of Diverse that are exploring blockchain outside of fintech and outside of insurtech and banking financial services but specifically for good for social enterprises and uh, not necessarily from a commercial or transaction contract that it's most of the times when people say oh I'm doing good I'm doing financial inclusion I'm doing social enterprises they refer about solving prop, uh, poverty and poverty it's an economic uh, po problem white supremacy and Islamophobia and sexism which is a talk that I'll be giving in one week, which kind of sexual offenses, um, which kind of sex, uh, sexism uh, stereotypes can they be solved by blockchain?
happening and which organizations or individuals are touching this this problems and what what could be a positive outcome so London is top number one within Europe I'm not sure if I could compare it with um, San Francisco or New York I haven't explored I haven't I'm not in a position to say that but within the last 30 cities that I visited within the last uh, two and a half months yes London is number one there you go heard it from I won't call it a horse but the horse's mouth um, <laughs> and I, I guess I, I'll try and wrap this up for you but um, what, what's your key motivation what would you like to see disrupted as the number one thing at the moment that you're thinking that is where we could go in I mean you've got so much on and I, I know there's so many things that you're kind of interested in but do you have a, a number one disruptor um, yes but I'm gonna cheat because I'm gonna say two uh, because they're equally important I think in the United States would be white supremacy racial supremacy against african-american and black lives matter uh, and also the deportations that exist for Hispanics and a thousand and a hundred families that are being separated every day thanks to President Obama and uh, the xenophobic United States movement so deportations and racial discrimination if they could be a solution towards the centralized distributed uh, technology like blockchain uh, we're exploring it and I'm particularly interested in, in developing use cases and solutions to these problems Alexander, thank you very much for your time great to have you back in the country buddy good thank to you. see you good to